Hi everyone, my name is Joe Carrig with the Carrig Real Estate Team. And this is your Tassar Valley Blackhawk Real Estate Update for the week of July 26, 2020. You know, over 32 years ago, my wife and myself moved their four little kids into the Tassar Valley Blackhawk for all the same reasons that we see so many families coming into this area now. The schools, just the quality of life, the beauty of the area. Matter of fact, 32 years ago, Crow Canyon didn't even go all the way to Blackhawk. It ended at Doherty Road. And if you got on Doherty Road, a little two-lane road at Crow Canyon, you could literally drive all the way to Dublin without seeing one house. Can you imagine that now? There's 15,000 homes in there. I remember we really thought we were on the map in the Tassar Valley when we got our McDonald's. But I was actually one of the founders of Tassar Valley Little League. We didn't even have our own Little League here. And I've been very blessed over the last 30 years to be the number one real estate professional selling almost 600 homes in the Tassar Valley and Blackhawk. So I love to be able to share the information in this area and what makes it you know, so desirable to be here. So let's get right into the stats. First off, you know, when you look at Tassar Valley and when we talk about Tassar Valley, it's basically Danville, the 94506 area code. And you can see, I always tell people that you can drop me any place in the United States. And all I have to do is look at the actives and the pendings, and I can tell you where the market's going. I can tell you if the market's going up or going down just by looking at the active and the pending sales. And when you look at this graph, this just goes back three weeks. But when I started doing this at the beginning of COVID, when we were in shelter in place, I can tell you that these graphs were completely inverted the active sales were way up here and the pending sales were back here. Now it's completely inverted and you can see it's turned totally into a seller's market. Anytime where you see the pendings are outpacing the actives, it is a seller's market. And if you're a buyer out there trying to purchase a home, you're getting into a multiple offer situation, at least with the, nice, the nicer homes and the homes that show, show well and are priced fairly. But what we looked at is we knew what we're really right now into now getting into August, we're really in our spring market right now because what happened February was the best February we've had in 13 years. And then in March, we hit COVID-19. And the real estate market, what it did is basically just pause. So when it started coming back in June, June was like March for us. So we're in the middle of our spring market and it's going nuts because over the last eight years, 90% of the appreciation happened during that February, March, and April timetable when there wasn't a lot of inventory, but there was a lot of demand. And that's what drives the market, supply and demand. So when you can see these pendings compared to the listing properties, you can see there's a lot of demand for not that many listings. And that's what makes the market so super hot. And one of those reasons is the fact that overall in the United States, we're two to three million homes short. And then you throw in interest rates that are actually below 3%. And it's just nuts out there. Now, if you're a seller, what a great time to be on the market. If you're a buyer, it's a little bit tougher, but I would still, with 3% interest rates, I would still be a buyer in this market, but I would be a smart buyer because where you might not have 10 offers on a home, you might, like we did in February, you might have three and four. And if you give a fair price, remember, you know, comparatively, when interest rates were four, just a 4% to 3% now, you can pay more for a home. So when you look at the Tassajara market, you can see that basically the pending sales are basically twice as much as the active sales. So it's definitely trending. So you had 52 properties that were currently pending this week. And now last week, the week before is 56. So you say it's four less, but when you look at the eight uh, sold properties that closed, we actually picked up four additional pendings. So that market is, is extremely hot in Tassajara. Now, when you look at the Blackhawk market, it's the same type of thing. But remember, the average price in Blackhawk is about $2 million. So you, you will normally see a little bit of a slower market. But still, I can tell you that that market was way, the actors were way here and the pennies were way here a couple months ago. Then what happened is when the market came back alive in basically the May, June, 
we saw a lot of new listings come on because we knew there was a lot of pent up demand and we knew we would see more listings. And so we really look at it not as how many listings come on the market, but what's the absorption rate? And it only took two to three weeks to see all those extra listings that were didn't come on during COVID come on and basically absorb by the buyers out there. So even in Blackhawk, this is a very, very strong market when you have a price range you know, that basically is, you know, 1.8 and 2 million on an average. So let's look at the stats for Danville and Tassajara. First off, Tassajara Valley, Valley, you can see the active sales, there's 29, the, they've been on the market for 29 days. The average price is a million six ninety seven. The pending sales, the average price is a million five ninety five. And then the sold, what basically reported sold is the average price is a million four twenty one, and they sold at ninety nine percent of asking. And you can see the days on the market for both the active and the pending and solds have all been under thirty days. Now, when you look at Blackhawk, you can see the active properties have been on the market seventy four days. But look at the average price, higher price properties because it's like a pyramid. As you go up in price, you have less buyers, so they'll spend more time on the market. They'll sell for a lower percentage. So you see that in the actives, the average price is 2.6 million and the days on the market is 74. But look at the pending sales. The pending sales, the average price was $2 million and they were only on the market 30 days. And a couple properties closed last week, but look at a million and a half. So what that is, the buyers are cherry picking the best deals and the lower prices. Because again, like a pyramid, as you go down, you have more buyers. So basically, there were two properties that closed and they one sold pre-market and one just took a couple of days of sold. So the days on the market was only one, but that market at a million and a half dollars in Blackhawk is very, very active. You know, one uh, website I want to share with you guys that's fun to watch is How Money Walks. And what you can do, it's completely interactive. You can basically go on, and this is for California, and you can see California lost $73.52 billion um, in, in AGI. And so it actually shows you in California where we gained the wealth from. Where did people come from? New York, Illinois, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut. And where did we lose wealth to? And I can tell you, I have a ton of clients, because when you get to be my age in my 60s, a lot of the clients, because it's expensive to retire in California, so we see them moving out of state. And sure enough, Nevada, Texas, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, it shows you where people are going. But if we look at deep dive a little bit more, if you go to how many walks, you can actually go into each individual county. And unlike California, you can see Contra Costa has been growing, has gained $2.08 billion. And the reason why is because we're seeing so many people with the the working from home now with COVID-19. We're seeing a ton of people coming from the cities out to the burbs. So because they can literally, you know, have a payments and buy a million dollar place for what they're renting a little one bedroom apartment there. So now that they don't have to go into work every day, we're seeing a flood of people come. And where did we gain our wealth from in Contra Costa? Alameda County, San Francisco, San Mateo, Santa Clara, Los Angeles. And if we lost some, you can see where we lost uh, people to Solano County, uh, Washoe County. And, and those are areas where people are kind of moving outside the area a little bit in Contra Costa. So, so it's a fun thing. Go to How Money Walks and it will show you. It's actually interactive. These numbers that you see up there actually are changing while you're looking at it. And you can go to any basically state and any county. So that's a lot of fun to, to play around with to see where the market is going. Um, every week what I want to do is I want to spotlight one of our neighborhoods in the Tassajara Valley or Blackhawk. And this week I want to talk to you about Wood Ranch. Wood Ranch is a neighborhood. We've been very blessed. We've sold over 50 homes in Wood Ranch. Wood Ranch was started in the 80s, the late 80s for the most part. And there were two builders. There was Ponderosa Homes. And then there was Davidon, and Davidon built Cimarron Hills. Um, the Ponderosa neighborhood was called Wood Ranch, and the Cimarron and the Davidon neighborhood was called Cimarron Hills. But it basically is made up; it all makes up into Wood Ranch. They have a great common area facility, beautiful pool, spa, tennis, basketball courts, play areas. It's one of the best community facilities, and we've moved a ton of our clients in there. 
for the facilities that they have. So the Ponderosa homes range from a single story, just over 2,000 square feet, to a two story of over 3,100 square feet. The lots are a little bit smaller because as you go up into the Cimarron Hills home, you'll get lots from quarter acre up to a third of an acre, up to a couple of them, a half acre, up to four car garages. And those models go from any place from 2,400 square feet in the Chaparral model, all the way up to almost 3,700 square feet in the Wood Ranch model. So again, if you want any information on any of the neighborhoods, like I mentioned before, I've been very blessed to have sold you know, almost 600 homes in the Tassar Valley and Blackhawk. And so there's not one neighborhood that we are not experts in, that we haven't sold. Just like I said, in the Wood Ranch, we've sold over 50 homes in Wood Ranch. So if you have any other questions or you need any other information, please don't hesitate to reach out. And again, you can reach out. You can call me at 925-487-6838. And again, joe at carrigteam.com or visit our website, Team. Uh, com. Again, thanks a lot for taking the time. Uh, every couple weeks, you'll be getting this update and you'll be able to see how the market shifts, especially as we get closer to the election. A lot of people ask me, I mean, every single day, Joe, what do you, where do you think the market's going? Well, you know, it's, it's hard to say, you know, because even though you go any place in the United States and where there's jobs, the market's doing really well. And there's certainly jobs in the area, but we do have an election coming up. And as we get closer to the election, things are going to get a little bit negative, you know, probably really negative, you know, nasty. And what happens is where buyers start to pull back because I don't think inventory, you know, is going to grow because people, we used to say everyone moved every seven years. And the Wall Street Journal just came out with a report that says people are staying in their home 13 years. So I don't think that the inventory is going to grow. If the market settles down a little bit, it's going to be because the uncertainty and the buyers pull back a little bit. So again, look for the next video in a couple of weeks. Call me with any questions. Again, 925-487-6838. Because every neighborhood is just a little bit different, even within some streets in a neighborhood. Thanks a lot for listening and have a great week. And we'll talk to you soon.